everyone, it's Gina from Gina K Designs and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I see people coming in from all over the country and all over the world over on my right screen there. I see you guys. Wow, lots of you coming from Kathy Zilski's live and I just love that. I was over watching her live. I was trying to stay really quiet, you know, because I didn't want anybody to know I was there I because she's so good. And um, then she started talking about my ink and I just, I couldn't help it. I had to tell her that I loved her and how talented she is. So, and then she gave me a shout out, which is so nice. So thank you all for coming over. You guys are uh, doing back-to-back -back lives today. That's so much fun. Well, today I have a really fun technique for, for you. And if you kind of saw my teaser on either YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook, what I said I was gonna to teach today is how to not color with Copic markers, how to not color intricate line art images with Copic markers. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you today. And I know that sounds a little weird, but really sometimes we buy these beautiful line art images and we love to sit and color. We do no line coloring, we do watercolor, we do all these fun techniques. But other times we want a fast way to make a card and we don't wanna go through the whole coloring process. Or maybe some of you don't feel like you're ready to color a card, but you wanna do something with these line art images. So I'm gonna tell you, pull out your favorite line art images because today's technique is really fun and really beautiful and super easy. So the stamp set that I'm going to use today is this newer stamp set. This is by Arjita Singh. It's a gorgeous, huge floral and you can see how intricate it is. It's called Heartfelt Bouquet. And I'm gonna use this giant image. And then if I have time, depending on how much time this one takes, I might do another card using this huge carnation image by Hannah. Hannah uh, Drapinski drew this for us and this set is called I Admire You. So, you know, sometimes you see sets like this and you think, oh, I'd really love to get it and I'd love to learn how to color, but I think I'm going to, you know, I think I, I might not be good enough or whatever. Let me show you what you can do with this with no skill at all. Now, I learned part of this technique from my friend Kathy Rakusin. And Kathy, if you don't know who Kathy is, check out her YouTube channel and her Instagram. Her handle is The Daily Marker. And she does amazing things with Copic markers. So I took one of her techniques to do this technique and then I added my own twist to it. So I'm gonna start using a Misty stamping tool and I highly recommend you use a Misty for this. You're gonna need some sort of stamping platform in order to do this. And I just have a piece of white cardstock. This is the Gina K Designs 80 pound layering weight cardstock. I'm gonna pop it here into the corner. And um, then I'm going to take this large image here. Now, some of this is just a little putsy. So you'll have to bear with me while I do some of the type of coloring that I'm going to do, but it's worth it and it's really a lot of fun. So I'm gonna just put this over here like this. And then I'm gonna end up cutting this panel out using one of our master layouts dies. So even though it's kind of going outside and there's a lot of space down here, I'm gonna figure out where I wanna cut it and then add my greeting. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I see you all coming in from both Facebook and YouTube. It's great to see you all. Okay, so the key with this technique is you want to make sure you use some sort of stamping platform. Hey, Kathy Z, I see you there. I texted you. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Okay, you want to make sure you use some sort of stamping platform so that you can make sure that you're going to be able to stamp this a second time in this technique. So if you have a Misty, great, a mini Misty, fine. You have the Tim Holtz, whatever you have is totally fine. I know Stampin' Up! has one too. Just make sure that you put it in a spot that you can get it in exactly the same position again. Now I'm going to use some honey mustard ink, which really isn't a great color to use for line art stamping. But the reason why I wanna use this color is because I'm gonna do some embossing after the fact. And when I get to that point, I'm gonna use gold embossing powder. So I wanna find an ink that works really well with gold. So if a little bit sticks out, it's still gonna have that gold feel. 
Now, if you're going to use silver embossing powder for yours, then use a gray ink instead. If you're going to use copper, maybe use something a little more orangey. So I'm using honey mustard and I'm going to ink up my image really well with honey mustard. And I'm using a little bit of a darker ink color because I do want to make sure that I can see it. I mean, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So for those of you that use the super light colors for no line coloring, God bless you. I know um, it looks great, but I do have a little bit of trouble seeing the super light colors. That's very easy to see. So I'm going to quickly clean my stamp using the tidy towel. I want to make sure I get that nice and clean, but I am not moving that stamp. That stamp is staying on the misty, and I'm going to take this out, clean up that a little bit, and then I'm going to put this aside because we're going to use this again later. Now, what you want to do is you want to pick a color Copic marker. If you're really good at color blending with Copic markers, you can certainly do a beautiful blended background. I'm just going to go straight away with color. I'm going to pick a marker here. I've got BG18, which is teal blue. Another great color to do with this is this RV19 red violet. You can do either color. You can do a dark navy. Uh, whatever you want to do, but just make sure it's a dark, vibrant color. You don't want to go with a real pale color. You want some color on this card. All right, so what we're going to do is we are not going to color this image. Instead, we are going to color around the image. So this is pretty easy to do. We're just going with straight color, so we're not worrying about, you know, doing fancy blending or anything but we're just coloring nice solid color around the outside of this image. Now this is definitely uh, a very detailed image. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than say the stamp set that I showed you with Hannah's image. And you do wanna make sure that you're coloring all the little details inside around the images. Don't worry if you go over the lines of the stems. Don't worry if you creep in a little bit on the lines themselves. None of that is going to matter because we're going to go back over this again. So you can see I just kind of went over the line there. That's okay. So if anybody has any questions for me about anything, really, I am happy to answer them because this is going to take just a few minutes for me to do this. Also, I really like using the sketch markers because they have that brush tip, which allows me to get nice bold color, but it also allows me to get in the tiniest areas with that tiny little tip on the end. This will also work with any of the other alcohol markers that you might have in your collection. So go ahead and try whatever you have. Don't feel pressured to use Copics. I'm just using Copics because that's what I have but I know some of you have the Spectrum Noir markers. Some of you have the, the Stampin' Up! alcohol markers. I don't know if they still have those, um, but you know, any alcohol marker will work for this. And then I'll show you, Kat, this is part of Kathy Rakusin's technique about filling in the background. I mean, a lot of us don't think to do this when we're coloring an image, how pretty it will be if you color in the entire background. If you're a great Copic marker, Colorer, artist, colorer. Is that a word, Tom? Tom, <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> colorer? <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Um, if you're if you're a Copic marker artist, you definitely can um, color this image instead of doing this technique. But I think this is a really, really fun way. If you're not feeling very artistic and you want something that's a little bit different than a regular colored card. OK, so you can see I'm going right around these edges. And Tom, if anybody has any questions or anything, I'm not looking uh, up at the questions right now because I have to focus. But if you want to shout out any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Wondering how you're feeling. How am I feeling? I'm feeling really great. Things are going well. I'm very happy. Um, for those of you that weren't here for my Monday Night Live, I think that's where I announced it. I know a lot of you were with me when I told you about my tongue. If you didn't hear about that, I'll give you the, you know, the real short story here, the abridged version. Uh, my tongue was hurting. I didn't know why. It was burning. 
And I thought maybe it was from eating a lot of spicy foods. Then I thought maybe it was my diabetes because I do get nerve pain from my diabetes. Um, and I went to the doctor and the dentist. I booked both appointments, doctor and dentist on the same day because I wanted two opinions. I uh, went to the doctor and the doctor said, you have acid reflux. And I said, well, that's weird because I don't feel like I have acid reflux. And she said, yep, no, you have acid reflux, definitely. Um, and she gave me acid reflux medicine. So then right after that, I booked these appointments back to back. I went to, this doesn't sound like the short version of the story, does it? <laughs> I went to the dentist and she looked in my mouth and she said, oh no, you've got two lesions in your mouth. You've got one on your tongue and you've got one on the floor of your mouth and they look suspicious to me and there's a possibility that they could be cancer. So I uh, kind of freaked out a little bit inside, you know, and she made me a, an appointment with a specialist. Well, I couldn't get into that specialist for a month. It took a month to get in. Um, and, you know, it wasn't getting any better. And so, but it wasn't getting any worse. So I, I didn't know what was going on. So I ended up going to the specialist and they did a biopsy on my tongue, which was not comfortable, but it was not the worst thing in the world, but it was not comfortable. Um, and the results came back two weeks later, no cancer. And what it is, what it turned out to be is another autoimmune disease, which I have a lot of those. It seems like if you get one, they kind of come in groups. It's an, it's an autoimmune disease called lichen planus. So for those of you that want to get on Dr. Google and figure out what that is, but it is, um, it is not fatal. It's just painful. Um, and the good news is once the doctor told me that I didn't have cancer, I feel like the pain subsided a lot. So I bet a lot of the pain, um, I mean, the, the, the syndrome itself, the disease itself is painful, but I bet that, you know, just wondering if it was cancer was just making it worse. You know how we get, right? And then we do the worst thing in the world. We go on Google and we put in our symptoms. And I don't care what your symptom is. If you say my eye is twitching, it'll come back a brain tumor. If you, <laughs> right? <laughs> if you say my big toe hurts, you definitely have bone cancer. So, um, of course, I went to Dr. Google first and scared myself. And that's why I went to the doctor right away. So... It's all good. So thank you for asking. Yes, I'm doing well. Things are going well. Um, and I am feeling, feeling fine. Just had a birthday not that long ago. And I, I do want to give a shout out to all of you who sent birthday wishes on my Facebook, my Instagram, sent me cards. Some of you sent me gifts. Oh my goodness. You guys are all so sweet and so kind. Um, and I appreciate every single wish. I know that I have to go in and I want to respond to every one of them, but I just haven't had a whole lot of time to stop because we have a release right around the corner. And I know a lot of you were asking when our next kit is coming out. So I want you to know that we do have a kit coming out at the end of this month. February 25th will be our next release. So I'm pretty excited about that. In fact, Kathy Zilski is going to be part of our release. She's going to be a guest designer for us. So, hey, Kathy, thank you for that. I shipped your stuff. Well, I didn't. Sammy did. I helped, though. Little. <laughs> I directed. <laughs> okay. So you can see what I'm doing here. You can see that my, um, it's not super smooth. And that's okay. It doesn't really need to be super smooth because we're going to do something to kind of spice it up anyway. Now, it's always a little difficult for me to see what lines I should be coloring and what lines I shouldn't be coloring. So sometimes you just have to take a step back. You have to look at it and say, okay, is that part of a petal or a leaf or should I be adding some background color in there? So much has changed this year. I don't know if you guys who 
those of you who know who Kathy Rakusin is, she was doing like a, a tour. She actually did like a worldwide tour for her 30 day coloring challenge. She was over in Europe. She did um, something up in Canada, I believe. And then she also was doing different events all over the U S and she came to my store and did a coloring challenge road trip event at my store. And we had lots of people that came in and took her class. And it's really fun to do that. I can't wait until we can start to do events again and shows and get out there and see you guys in person. I just miss all the, I don't know, all the love and hugs that we give each other when we see each other in person. It's so much fun. I'm sure you guys do too. Even just getting together with your friends and doing like a little retreat or just a stamping day together. Boy, I miss those too. Okay, so I'm working my way around this thing. I know this is take this is the worst part of the of the technique. Just getting around all the edges. But you can see, I mean, it takes no skill. It just takes a little bit of patience. But I really love the outcome. So I know it doesn't look great right now. It doesn't seem to look great until after we do the second stamping. All right. Yeah, Scrappy Hour. Remember Scrappy Hour? We used to do that. It was so fun. I used to always um, post on Instagram, too, what we were making. And it felt like a lot of you that didn't even live close, cl close by could be part of it. Okay. So I was thinking about doing this for a video. And I want to know what you guys think if you think you would like a video like this. So one of the questions I get all the time is, Gina, how do you clean your stamps? Gina, how do you clean your misty? How do you clean your acrylic blocks? How do you clean your blending brushes? And they're all really good questions. And I do have tips and tricks on how to clean things and, you know, make them like new again. And, you know, get them ready for your next project. So would you guys like a live video where I show you how to clean all the things? Now for this part, I'm just gonna do like a circular motion to try to eliminate too many streaky lines. Cause you know, if you do this, you get a lot of streakiness, but if you do this circular thing, it tends to blend a little bit better, especially when it dries. So tell me what you, oh yeah, you think that's a good idea? Okay, I looked up because I wasn't going around lines. So I was yeah, able to look up. Markers, well, for this part of the technique, yeah, you do want to use alcohol markers. Now I say that, but really that's kind of, that's kind of not 100% true. You can do this with colored pencils. You can do this with regular dye-based markers. Um, you can do, do this with all that. You just can't do one of the steps. So if that's all you have right now, go ahead and try this technique with your water-based markers. You can always spritz your card with water if you're using water-based markers and camera see how it works. Hmm? Camera keeps going out. Oh no, sorry if our camera's going out. We're having a little technical difficulties today. So just don't leave because Tom knows how to fix it. Is it working okay now? <laughs> You'd like me to do a craft room tour and how I organize? Oh. <laughs> well, I would love to do that. I am so disorganized though. Um, maybe it would make everybody feel good if they saw how disorganized I was and how everything is just thrown everywhere. But yes, I, I could do that. My craft room is super, super tiny. So it is part of my dining room. It's my dining room, actually. And I had, um, I had a closet company come in. California Closets came in and built a back wall for me. It's kind of like a walk-in closet. And then they built an island for me. And then I went to Ikea and got a countertop and they installed it. And it's really tiny. I don't have a lot of stuff. I know that sounds crazy, but I really don't because I have mostly just my own line. So, you know, I mean, when you see a craft tour of like Kathy Zilski's spot or Simon Hurley or Jennifer McGuire, Kat Katrina Warner, 
Katrina, Christina Warner. Did I really say Katrina? Oh my God. I hope she's not watching. She's one of my best friends. And I said her name wrong. Uh, Christina Warner. And you see her craft room, you know, they have so many products from so many different companies that they need a lot of space. Um, I just have my line, so I don't need quite as much space, but I would be happy to do that. That would be actually very fun. And you can see how I organize. Okay. So you can see this is kind of, um, <laughs> this is kind of a little bit, I don't know, shadowy in here, but that's okay. All right. Do you do, do you do Instagram live on your thoughts? On, I did do an Instagram live on my thoughts about casing and I went to save it and I didn't realize that I had to do something special to save it and it wiped out. So maybe I'll have to do um, a live here on YouTube and on Facebook about my thoughts on casing. And those of you who've seen it, you know, you can just not watch that one or, you know, Maybe you want to see it again. Okay, so here I have an old washcloth. And I'll tell you about this washcloth. I got like a pack of 20 of these at the dollar store. These are the kind of washcloths I like to use for this technique because they're not very plush. They're not very soft. The loops are kind of, they kind of stick out a little bit more. They're kind of cheap, but it makes it better for this technique. You can see them. The, I, I cut it down so like my frays are falling. Okay, now you can use one of two things to do this. Vicki, I'll explain what casing is in just a minute. So you can use either Copic, uh, this is the clear refill. This is the blender, colorless blender refill. You can use this. If you don't have this, you can use alcohol blending solution too. So alcohol blending solution by Tim Holtz, this is excellent for his alcohol inks, but it also works on other alcohol inks. So you can use either one. Yes, casing means copy and share everything or copy and steal everything, depending on what side of the aisle you fall on. So I'll give you my thoughts on that um, on another day. All right, so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the uh, Copic refill for this. And I'm gonna take this washcloth and I'm gonna put some of the Copic refill on the washcloth. And then I'm going to just touch this all over and it creates this beautiful texture. It almost makes it look like it's got like a leather texture to it. And you can see I'm going right over the white parts, right over the ink. It's not gonna damage the ink. It's an alcohol-based formula. So it's not gonna damage the ink at all because our inks are dye-based. I wouldn't do this with amalgam ink though. Definitely don't do it with amalgam ink, but can you see that beautiful texture that's coming up? <laughs> so, okay, I'll talk a little bit about my thoughts on casing since you guys are all asking about it. Um, so there are some designers out there, make sure you get into the small areas too. There are some designers out there that put their YouTube videos up and their card projects up as inspiration. And when they say inspiration, what they mean is you can be inspired by this. For example, I'm gonna do a video on a watercolor technique and you can use my technique, but create your own card or your own idea. Okay, so let's look at this close. Isn't that pretty? How does that look on? It's on suede. Yeah, it's got a suede look, right? Yeah, this is just regular Gina K Designs, 80 pound layering weight cardstock. You can do this with the alcohol lift ink, which is the same, similar to this, I believe. Um, I did one a little earlier, which I'll show you what that looks like. It looks exactly the same actually, but yes, you can. Um, and what they want you to do is they want you to be inspired by their work, but they just want you to kind of come up with your own ideas or your own version of the projects. And I totally respect that train of thought. To the contrary though, I put my cards and my techniques up for you to copy 
down to the last sequin. I don't care. You can copy everything that I do. I don't care what you do with it after you copy it. If you want to go and sell your cards on Etsy or you want to share them or you want to put them in challenges or whatever, I don't care. I'm here totally for you. So you can copy my cards exactly down to the very last sequin and I am totally fine with that. And Gina K Designs is an angel company. So we do allow you to sell your cards using our products so that's my thought on it and um, I delve a little deeper when I talk about this subject as a standalone subject but and I don't think anybody should get hate for either side that they fall on I think that uh, um, casing is a personal thing and everybody sh has to be comfortable with you know with it and if they're not and they just want you to be inspired, then be inspired. If they don't mind if you copy, then copy away. You can copy me though, I'll just tell you that. Okay, so now we're gonna do part two. We're gonna take the embossing magic pad and we're gonna rub this all over the surface of this card. And I'm gonna even rub it down here where I don't have a design because I don't want this embossing powder to stick. Now you see, I feel like this looks not perfect um, because I went over the lines a little bit and you also can't really see some of the lines, but you will when I get this second layer on here. Okay. So I'm going to just put my magnet down here and I'm going to use a Versamark pad and I am going to ink this up real well with Versamark. I know you can't see me cause I'm off the screen, but, but you guys know what I'm doing here. I'm inking up the stamp. And I'm really giving it a little bit of extra ink because I really only want to do this once. So yeah, casing, case, the word case is an acronym that stands for copy and share everything or copy and steal everything. And uh, an angel company or an angel policy is a policy that a stamp or scrapbook company has for using their products in items that you hand make to sell on places like Etsy. And some companies are angel companies, meaning you can use their stuff and make stuff to sell and other companies are not. And you just have to check their policy, but you don't have to check ours. Cause I'll tell you right now, we are an angel company and you can use our products to make hand make and sell whatever you want. Okay. All right, so now I've added a layer of Versamark right over exactly where I put my first image. And now I'm going to use gold embossing powder. Now I'm gonna do this over a piece of cardstock because this is really big and it's just easier for me to, um, to just sprinkle it and then put it back in the, in the case. So it's gonna go all over this. And I think you can see what's going to happen here. Okay. I'm going to just blow away the excess. All right. Copy and slightly edit. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's, I'm sure that people that prefer you to be inspired would be fine with that acronym. <laughs> but I'm fine with the sharing. Go ahead and use it any way you want. Okay. So now I'm going to heat emboss this. Yeah, I know, you know, the truth of the matter is there's hardly anything that hasn't already been done. People redo techniques, they rename them, they change something about them, they put their own twist on them, but I don't know that there's so much new under the sun at this point. All right, oh, this is so pretty. I love this look. <laughs> All right, there we go. We have a detailed image that you didn't have to color. Oh, I love that. What am I using on top of the Misty? Oh, this is my Chucky tool. My friend Chuck Meadows made this for me. He used a curtain finial and he put a furniture protector pad on the bottom and he gorilla glued it together because he saw I was struggling and it just helps put a little more pressure on my Misty. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off here and then we're gonna uh, cut this out first and then we're going to decide where we wanna put our greeting. <laughs> Let me see if I can zoom out a bit. 
do the uh, sky view. Oh, and let me show you while I have this right here. So this is the one I did with the Copic blending solution. Here's the one I did with the alcohol blending ink, the blending solution by Tim Holtz. Looks almost identical, right? So if you have, can we use just alcohol? I bet you can. I bet you can use just alcohol. Definitely give it a try. Maybe don't go through the whole card and then try it. Just scribble some Copic on there and use some rubbing alcohol. Yeah, I mean, I think it would work. I think you get a little bit more of a vibrant look when you use the blending solution and the, um, the alcohol ink blending solution and the Copic blender, but alcohol should make it do something for sure. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to cut this right about here. Okay, like that. So um, I'm just looking at some of your comments um, about, you know, about being able to use the stamps that you buy in any way that you want. I think the reason why some companies aren't angel companies is because the art that they use is owned by the original artist. And um, that artist has to be on board with allowing you to do that. Okay, so I cut that out using this die and this die is from Master Layouts too. Now I'm going to cut the plain die from Master Layouts 2 in black to give it a little bit of a black background. So we'll do that next while I have the machine out. <laughs> okay. I have a very, very tight piece of cardstock here. I cut a bunch of these by hand for another project that I was doing. I have a lot of extras, but it's so close to the master layout size. Yeah, I know it's a controversial topic. I think, um, yes, copyright, copyright laws would have something to say about using stamps any way you wish. Yeah, I mean, if, if an artist owns the copyright, they can tell you what you can and can't do with it. So, all right. But I don't want to, you know, I don't want to argue anybody else's idea of what they believe is right or wrong. I can only speak for Gina K Designs, and we allow you to use them any way you want. So, okay, so I'm going to tape this together. Isn't this just such a cool look? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I need to find a tape that is available here. Rena came. And we made a video together and she swiped a bunch of my tape. Oh, that's pretty on the other side too, isn't it? <laughs> so you can see this is bleeding through. This is our 80 pound cardstock. So it will bleed through. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to put my greeting on. That just gave it a little stability. Um, and you want to have a little stability in your card when you're stamping so that it doesn't, you know, it's not all foldy and bendy. So if you can mount it onto your black piece first, that really does make a difference. Okay, so now we're going to do another embossed greeting here. I want to do it in gold and I want to use this stamp set here, the same stamp set. So I'm going to say hello. I could do friend. Ooh, I could do friend. Could do friend. So I don't know if you saw all these gorgeous greetings in here, but we will get through this. I've been thinking about you. It's been too long. Praying for you. Tomorrow is a new day. My friend, sweet friend. Hello, my, and hello, sweet. So I could do hello, sweet friend. I think I'll do that because friend is nice and bold here. Hello is nice too, but I feel like I've got a little extra room, so I'm going to use it. So I'm going to position this so it looks straight and I'm going to move it down a little bit because I want to have a little bit of room to do my greeting on the top, the hello suite. Okay. That looks pretty good. So now once again, I'm going to make sure that's in the right spot. I'm going to use my embossing magic pad and I'm going to use some Versamark on this. 
really want to ink it up well. I haven't used this stamp set yet. So when you use a stamp set for the first time, sometimes you have to prep it a little bit by rubbing your finger over it um, and just getting off the manufacturing residue. Uh, this set is called Heartfelt Bouquet, and it's by the amazing Arjita Singh. Arjita is one of our illustrators, and she just draws such a beautiful flowers. Okay, so hopefully I got a good impression there. And we're going to go back to this. Now I can use just the container. A little piece of my washcloth got in there. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so let's emboss that. I always try to get the misty out of the way. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's a pretty friend. I love that. And I'll take real good, high quality pictures of this card so you can see it. And I'll post it in our Facebook group over at Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. I'll also post it on YouTube at my uh, Gina K Designs uh, YouTube channel. There's a community tab there and it allows me to uh, post pictures and stuff. So I never knew that I had a community channel. And I think it's something after you get a certain amount of subscribers, they give you this extra tab and you can post photos, which is so cool. So I started doing that probably a few months ago. So you'll see a lot of up close photos of my projects. All right, so I'm gonna get another piece of white cardstock here. And I feel like a white flag will look very nice on here. So I'm gonna do a white flag. I'm going to stamp Hello Sweet. I really don't need to use the Misty for this. I'm just going to get an acrylic block and some black ink. And I'm just going to pick that up and use some black ink on this. I don't know if I'll get to the second card. I don't think I will. but maybe I'll make it and just share it in the group. Okay, so there we go. Hello, sweet, looking good. Not bad for the first time stamping that stamp. Came out nice. And now I'm going to use one of the other dies that we have from Master Layouts 3. Master Layouts 3 has some tiny little flags. And so I think I'm gonna use this tiny little flag to cut this one out. Normally I would go over if we're getting close to the, to the time, but today I can't go over. Wow, that's really close. Sorry guys, let me back up. Today I don't think I can go over because um, our daughter Alicia, she has had her car broke down and she takes a class that Tom has to pick her up at. So I think he's going to um, have to get out of here. And so I can't go past one o'clock. So if I, you know, we might have to end just a little bit early today, but I'll be back on Monday night again with more fun. Um, that is not straight. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, this is the perfectionist in me coming out. And then after doing all of that, not taping it down, like a ding dong. Okay. <laughs> there will not be a Master Layouts 5 with this new kit. However, there are, um, in this new kit, instead of doing a stencil this time, I just shot my die across the room. Tom, we're gonna have to look for that later. Okay. <laughs> um, Instead of doing a stencil this time, we have two word and shadow dies that we added in that you're going to get so much use out of. So you're going to absolutely love this new kit. I can't wait. Okay, so this is not perfectly straight, but it is close to straight. See what I'm saying? It's a little bit going uphill, but we'll deal with it. All right, so now this is going to go onto a white card base. And this is a side fold card, so it's kind of jumping up a bit, but that's all right. So I'm going to put that on there. Yes, the well, the 25th is a Thursday. 
I will be doing a nighttime live on that particular uh, day because more of our um, more of our viewers are available at night and our illustrators are available at night. Some of them have jobs and they have kids in school and they're doing homeschooling and things like that. So we will be doing a nighttime live on the 25th. So I hope some of you guys can come. It'll be a lot of fun. I love the lunchtime ones though. We have fun together here. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on top. Hello, sweet. I think that might've looked better if I did it in gold embossing, but I think it's a little too late now to go back. So we're gonna stick with the black and we'll just get a good angled picture here so that you can see all the shine. I'm gonna pop that right in there. Okay, so there is my finished card. What do you guys think? Do you like that technique? <laughs> All right. I love it. I It's so easy. And it just, I don't think about all the solid, uh, all of the line art flower images you have in your collection that maybe you haven't felt like using for a while because you just are more into techniques right now, or you just don't feel like coloring. I mean, that gives you a way to, um, to do it really cool. So we do have about 20 minutes left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to at least stamp this flower, this big flower, and I'm going to color the background and at least get the texture down. We'll just see what it looks like. And then I might have to turn it into a card off screen. So this gigantic carnation is by Hannah Drapinski. And this set is called I Admire You. I want to try this with that pinkish purple color. I think it would be just gorgeous. So we're just going to put that like right there. My goodness, this, this is, that is like a big stamp. That's as big as my face. All right. And we're going to stamp it in bubblegum. No, we're going to, what am I talking about? We're going to stamp it in honey mustard because we're going to do gold embossing on this one too. Although I'd love to try it with the silver. I haven't tried it yet with the silver, but I've got all this out and we are limited with our time. So we're going to do it this way. Okay. So this is going to be a lot of white space in this flower. But that's okay. I think it's going to look really pretty. Oh, look at the size of that. Now, remember, don't take that stamp off of your Misty. That is the big thing. If you do take it off, just flip the cardstock over and restamp it. Don't try to line it up because you really want it to be like spot on. All right. So, this one I'm going to use um, RV19. And I'm going to just this one isn't as detailed, so I think we're going to have time to do this. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty color too, isn't it? I love the leathery look effect that you get from that technique that Kathy Rakusen taught me. Just such a beautiful texture. And she also does that when you're coloring little critters with Copics. You can go on top of them with that and it gives them like furry texture. So that's a fun technique. Why don't you emboss first? That's a great question. So the reason why I don't emboss first is number one, um, embossing powder kind of breaks down a little bit with Copic markers. So even though I have done some Copic marker coloring on embossing powder, I've heard over the years that it can ruin your Copic markers. So it just breaks down the embossing, uh, embossing powder. So that's one reason. The other reason is because if you go a little bit over the line and you get Copic marker on the gold, it will actually color the gold. Because Copic markers are alcohol markers, you can color on non-porous materials with them. Like you can color buttons and brads and eyelets and things with them. So you actually end up coloring your embossing powder. And I am just not that precise. And I always get the marker up over the edge of the embossing powder. So 
And then it also just cleans up the whole image when you emboss afterwards. So I hope that answers that. Yeah, this isn't too bad, an easy image to color around. But you can see like I'm gonna, it's just really hard not to go over the lines here. And so then I would be coloring over my embossing powder. So then you lose some of the gold or you lose some of that silver. The other thing that's fun about this technique is you can do the Copic outlining like this first, and then you can do the embossing and then you can go in and watercolor the flowers. So the, the edges of that embossing powder will hold the water, hold the watercolor inside the flower. And it allows you to do more than one kind of coloring medium on one card because you're not really worried about what kind of ink you're using. You can also do that with amalgam ink, but having that little bit of shine from the embossing powder is super fun. I'm not gonna worry about up here as much. Well, maybe I should, I might. You just never know where you're gonna cut, right? And if I'm gonna do the whole technique and make a card out of it for you guys to post, I should do it right. Get every little thing. This one's a lot easier though, cause it, there's not as many nooks and crannies on the inside of the image. Okay, so now we're just gonna color big circular motions. You can also use the chisel end of your Copic markers for this, which might make it go a little bit faster. And again, I'm not worried too much about perfect blending. But for those of you that are really good at blending, you could do a fade. You could do a Copic marker fade. You could do a rainbow blend in the background, which would be gorgeous. I don't use my Copic markers anywhere near enough. And I think some of you are probably like me. This would be a little more difficult with colored pencil, this part, but you definitely could try it with water-based markers or even watercolor. And you could spritz it with water to get a texture. But if you've got Copic sitting around and you've been meaning to use them in a fun new way, this is a fun way. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> yeah, it's fun though. Okay. Okay. So I think I've got that colored in pretty well. And I can use that same rag. I don't have to worry about transferring color because the Copic blending solution pretty much just dissolves all the color, it just eats it away. There's just no color left. I mean, you never see any color on the washcloth from doing that technique. Okay. So let's get some colorless blender solution here. Why not make your own, your own blending solution? I don't know how, I mean, I know that you can probably use regular alcohol, but I'm not a hundred percent sure how to make my own, if that's what you're talking about. Okay, so here we go. Oh, that's cool. Look what it's doing. Okay, I gotta do this. It's actually transferring a little bit of the color onto the flower. Oh, I love that. I love when things happen by mistake. Don't you guys? Just a little bit, I don't know if it'll stay because the Copic blending solution, sometimes it just lightens up and it disappears. But, oh, I love that. I want it to stay. Hopefully I'll get a good picture of this so you can see it in real life. It's just fun. Let's see if I can get close. Can you see that on your phone, Tom? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, good. So let's see if I can... Can you see the little bit of pink dots that are in there? Oh, very cool. Okay. So we'll see if they're still there later when I take a picture. Great. If not, sometimes, you know, the blending solution, just everything just disappears as it dries. So we'll see. Okay. So that is what the pink looks like with the texture. I like the pink too. I feel like this card might need a few sequins. 
What time is it? 10 minutes? Well, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going until, until the whole system shuts down. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to cut this out same way. We'll do the same layout on this card. And let's get... Now, this is tricky where we want to cut this one because I really want this one to, I want this, a lot of this flower to show, but I definitely need some room. I think something like that might work. And then we have room down here to use one of Hannah's greetings, like every winter has its spring. Oh, I like that. That's a really nice greeting. I have somebody that I need to send a sympathy card to, and I think that makes a great sympathy greeting. So we'll go with that, and then we'll do that greeting in gold. You're not doing boss first. Oh, yes. Thank you, Tom. Oh, my gosh. No, that was Ginger. Ginger, thank you. Hallelujah, Ginger. You saved me. <laughs> I see everybody yelling, Imboss, what are you doing? You're right. Oh, the... Uh, the perils of live. Okay, so I should probably clean this real quick. All right, is that the spot? Yes, thank you, thank you everyone for saving this card. Okay, so I'm gonna use the embossing magic pad again. I'm gonna use it down here too. I could almost emboss this greeting at the same time if I thought I was good enough, but I don't. I don't have that kind of faith in myself to be able to do both of them at the same time. Plus, I don't know where I'm cutting, so I don't want to emboss it in the wrong place and then cut part of it off. Thank you all so much. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Donnie, you came in late. Well, you just almost saw a disaster. So <laughs> you can thank everybody else that came in a little bit before you for saving this project. <laughs> okay. So we're going to stamp this again. And again, I'm using my Chucky tool to put the pressure on. Yeah, it's gonna make a huge difference. Yeah, I know that was close, Teresa. Whoo, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it was a good save, but it, it had nothing to do with me. I wasn't the one who saved it, you guys did. <laughs> That's why lives are great, because we're all in it together. You're here with me. You obviously can see that I can't do this without you. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going back with the gold embossing powder. Like I know what I'm talking about here. Okay. All right. And now we're going to emboss this. So if we do run out of time, I will finish this. Thank goodness I didn't try to finish this on my own without you. Lots of eyes on me. Yes, I know. It's great. I seriously can't do it without you. I don't even think you guys should be stamping along with me because I think I need to be watched. <laughs> so I don't do something wrong. I'm just kidding. Stamp along with me. I love it when you do that too. Oh, it looks so pretty when it goes around those edges. And it's just so clean this way, you know? Oh, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Whew, okay. So now we'll see that. Isn't that pretty? Yes. Okay. All right. Well... It is getting late, so I am going to stop making this card. I'm going to just cut it out the way I did this one and add the greeting. And then I will post both of them over in our Facebook group, on our Facebook page, and on YouTube in my community section on my channel so you guys can see these up close and see what they look like. Yeah. Um, we don't have a Chucky tool yet. But I do want to tell you that um, we are working on something. So you stay tuned for that. Um, it's a little bit different than this design, which I love this design, but it's a little bit different. There's some different things about it that, uh, that I have somebody working on, an engineer friend of mine. So hopefully we'll get that to you soon. All right, you guys. Well, 
here I am. Um, I do have a, I do have a quote for you. Sorry about our camera going in and out. I do have a quote for you today. And it's really about this, about what we did today, how we took something, you know, a, a line art image that is, was designed to be colored and we did something completely different with it. And we weren't intimidated by it. We just took the image and we just did it our way. So today's quote is, instead of thinking outside of the box, just get rid of the box. Do things that make you happy in whatever way sparks joy. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. I'll be back on Monday night at seven o'clock central time here on YouTube and on Facebook. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. And mwah, I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.